We talk today about the indoor air pollution and health co-benefits. Today, in the world, around 3 billion people, they cook and uh, they heat their homes using solid fuels, for example, wood, charcoal, dung, and the crop waste in the open fire or traditional stoves. And this sort of inefficient cooking and heating practices produce high levels of indoor air pollution. And this, this sort of indoor air pollution includes climate active pollutants, for example, black carbon, methane, tropospheric ozone, and uh, carbon dioxide. So reducing only the carbon active pollutants lead much faster to reduce global warming. If we consider carbon dioxide as major greenhouse gas that stays in the atmosphere, like for example, 100 to 1,000 years, then according to the climate policy angle, the climate active pollutants is a quick solution. Therefore, decreasing carbon active pollutants bring enormous health co-benefits through avoiding local toxic pollutants to women and the children while cooking in their homes. And carbon active pollutants with greatest effect and that warms the climate and also affects the health is the black carbon or black soup, which is a particular matter and not well mixed in the atmosphere. So this black carbon particles, they suspend in the air and that absorbs more heat energy and warms the climate. When black carbon, these particles settle in the snow, in the glaciers and in the sea, then it darkens their surfaces, which leads to decreased reflectivity or their albedo. And this absorbs more solar energy and this is mostly affected in the climatic sensitive regions, for example, in the Arctic and the Himalayas region. So the current estimate of today total climate forcing of black carbon is nearly about 1.1 watt per meter square. And the modeling conducted by the Godard Institute for Climate Forcing and studies European Commission's Joint Research Center has elaborated that Carbon dioxide is only one way to limit the global warming. And next two decades, maybe within the next two decades, the black carbons, methane, and the carbon dioxide emissions reduction can have a significant impact in the global climate change. Indoor air pollution, which is caused by the cooking and heating their homes in most, mostly the poorly ventilated homes, have much more high exposure among the women and the children like who stay inside their homes while cooking through the biomass burning. And this sort of indoor air pollution affects women and children and it affects mostly the mothers, creating a range of health effects. For example, the health effects could be nose, throat, irritation, lung function, impaired, low birth weight, and flu-like symptoms. And this, there are lots of enormous health effects that is caused due to the indoor air pollution. So regarding the different health effects due to the indoor air pollution, a Lancet of Respiratory Medicine has showed a detailed report like where in the globe the mostly affected regions are the Africa and Sub-Saharan Africa, where most of the deaths occur due to the indoor air pollution, where there is high mass of burning of biomass during cooking and for heating the, their homes. Indoor air pollution is also responsible for more deaths than heavily today media present outdoor indoor pollution. So WHO World Health Organization 2012 has estimated that approximately about 3.7 million deaths occur due to outdoor air pollution, whereas 4.3 million deaths occur due to only indoor air pollution. So we can see that indoor air pollution has majority of deaths globally today due to the indoor air pollution, and where there is, of course, high uh, use of biomass fuel as cooking their foods and warming their homes. And the deaths are usually in low and middle income countries like the Southeast Asia, and the African region. And all over the world, the air pollution has, like the World Health Organization has estimated about 7 million deaths worldwide today. And 
which is like mostly they occur in the low and middle income countries. Approximately about 88% of deaths are in low and middle income countries, which has the greatest burden of disease due to the indoor air pollution. And the majority is in the Western Pacific and in the Southeast Asia, where there is a high use of biomass fuel as their cooking stores and heating their homes relatively. So there are some health co-benefits of indoor air pollution control. The first approach is the improved cook stoves and the source of decreasing the elimination and the indoor air pollution sources. And there are today in the world proven technology, including the Inkly cleaner burning cookers, cook stoves, rather than cleaner fuels. And there are lots of successful projects that has studied to limit the carbon active pollutants with the, the improved cook stoves where there is high mass of biomass burning. And there are also successful research stories that uses improved stoves which is much more cost effective than the cleaner fuels. For example, the alternative fuel of cleaning cleaner cook stoves may be the liquefied petroleum gas, which has small carbon dioxide mediated climate effect, but there is no any health effects that damages the health of the population. So another approach could be the proper ventilation, for example, the maintenance of gas, oil, and cooking and heating systems could be maintained in order to prevent the indoor air pollution. And the, another co-benefit of the indoor air pollution control is the environmental co-benefit. Because when there is more frequently used cook stoves, then there is no more cutting of the woods, cutting of the trees for the timber wood for cooking and heating the houses. So women will have more time, more hours to care their children and to be involved in the agriculture. So this could be used as a gender-based co-benefit for the women in the low and middle income countries. And where there is frequently use of improved cook stoves used to control the indoor air pollution due to high use of biomass burning, then surely this co health co-benefits will be maintained. Thank you.